Hey, good morning, guys. I'm glad that you joined me. My name is Dr. McLaughlin, Sharon McLaughlin from Sharon Mac Wellness. Today, we're going to be talking about detox. Now, there's multiple ways to do it, so I wanted to go through why you should detox. Listen, when it comes to detoxing, the number one thing is prevention. If we have less toxins in our body, it's going to be that much easier for our bodies to detox. So going through the history of detox, it was used in India, it was used in China several thousand years ago. There's different ways to do it. The first step, be mindful about what you're surrounding yourself with. So what I mean by that is be careful of the environment that you surround yourself with. We'll go more into that. Make sure you're taking care of yourself. And in that program, I talk about nutrition, which we're gonna cover. I also talk about self-care and how important that is, and as well as self-development. So when it comes to self-care, sleep is so really important. If you're not sleeping seven hours a night, you're stressing your body. We, our bodies normally fight off toxins on a regular basis, but when the body is stressed, it's less able to do that. So it starts with you. Wellness is number one for everything. Make sure you're taking care of yourself. You're drinking enough, which we'll get into, sleeping enough, and really eating healthy, nutritious foods. Also, we need to exercise, whether that's yoga, whether that's actually going to the gym, whether that's running outside, whether that's doing strength training, it needs to be done. That helps increase our circulation, blood flow to our body, and that helps with detox, detoxing our body. So we'll go through some different methods of how we do this and what we should be aware of on a regular basis when we're surrounding ourselves with different chemicals. Most of us aren't even aware of the chemicals that we're surrounding ourselves with. So I wanted to cover this today. Now you may hear about juice cleansing. You may hear about, you know, doing enemas. I'm not an advocate of this at all. All right. Just start eating healthy, nutritious foods. We'll get into this. But this is the way that you want to detox. It's the safest way to do it. And it really isn't just something that you do overnight. It's slowly making changes. So we'll go through some environmental toxins we'll, and we'll go through some different ways that we can detox our body. Where should we start? Number one, look at what symptoms you're having. People talk about, oh, I feel like brain fog. I feel really tired. I am in a mental fog all the time. I have digestive problems. I have dermatitis. Um, I have rashes. I have um, maybe gluten sensitivity. I'm allergic to dairy, I have diarrhea, the symptoms are endless, all right? So as far as our body, what are the different ways that we detox? Through our skin, right? Intestines, kidneys, liver, they all play a part in detoxing our body. So if you're having your these ailments, there could be a serious condition going on. So I always recommend if you're having any ailments at all, such as like the diarrhea that's persistent, such as dermatitis, it's not going away. And you've used like, you know, an over-the-counter steroid cream. It really is time to go to the, you know, your physician and have a proper medical workup. But this can also be a form of allergies and there's ways to detox. So let's cover that. That's what I'd like to cover today. So I mentioned some of the conditions that may be happening. You know, some people, they talk about, oh, like I mentioned, diarrhea, the fatigue, um, that brain fog, stress. Now, there's other things that can be causing this as well. We have a lot of inflammation in our body. Typically, that's environmental exposures. And it's also the foods that we're eating can contribute to uh, inflammation. And this is why I really cover this very deeply in my course, which you can find at Sharon Mac Wellness. If you stay to the very end, I'm going to give you a detox guide. I have it all set, ready to go. All you have to do is just, I'll give you the link at the end and you can find that. So as far as starting, be aware and then decide what you want to work on first. You know, what organ, what food group, what environmental exposure. There's a lot to cover in this, in this talk today. So just be, you know, again, bringing awareness into this and we'll slowly go through different processes. Number one, I always recommend hydration, right? It dilutes everything. It helps with weight loss. It helps with toxin exposure. So make sure you're drinking enough water. Now, we can go a little bit deeper into that. The water that you're drinking, is it filtered, bottled water? What are the toxin levels in it? I'm not sure. Every water district here in the United States and probably throughout the world has different levels of toxins. And you can certainly get your hands on those toxins to see you know, uh, what the levels are. I always recommend a filter. 
in my house, we drink out of the refrigerator, that filtered water. It's usually a carbon filter, which you can easily get at Amazon. You just search for it, depending on the make and model of your refrigerator. Some people use faucets, those filters there. It's an easier way to go, but it does slow down the water stream. So typically what we do is, um, there'll be two different methods, full flow, which isn't filtered, and then a smaller flow, which is filtered. Again, the water comes out slower because it's being filtered. So just something to keep in mind. But start off with the water first. Start drinking a lot of water. Make sure that it's safe for water, all right? And then from there, we can talk about so many other things. Personal care products, which we're going to talk about. The household chemicals that we clean ourselves up with. Endocrine disruptors, neuro uh, neurological disruptions. They all cause dysregulation in our body, all right? So start with water first. So what can you do as far as water goes? If you look back at ancient India practices, what they do is lemon water. It's typically warm, you could do it cold, but apparently it's not absorbed as, as you know, the vitamins aren't absorbed as much. So try to stick with like room temperature water. You can either put it out the night before or pour yourself uh, room temperature water and put some lemon into that. It has a great source of vitamin D, I'm sorry, vitamin C, and it's a good way to start detoxing your body. Also, if you add the fiber rather than just the juice, so we want to do like the full lemon, and then you can actually have the fibers, is, um, you know, the little particles, the pulp they call it, that actually has fiber in it. So that helps. We're going to get more into that a little later in this talk. Healthy diet, nutrition is really so important. It's right up there with water. Think about all the foods that you're eating. A quick, I'll, in another video, I go over sugar, but we'll cover it briefly here. We know that sugar causes inflammation. It's a toxin, right? We all love our sweets. Small amounts are absolutely fine. Small little chocolate bars, you know, small scoops of ice cream, whatever it's going to be. Just small amounts. Don't make that, you know, primarily in your diet. And it doesn't mean that you have to have it every day too. But if you are gonna have it, small amounts. You know, there's different ways rather than having the whole candy bar, have a little bite piece of candy bar. Rather than having the whole container of yogurt, ice cream, whatever, small amounts. And then what you can do is uh, dark chocolate is better because it's filled with poly polyphenols and has some nutrients in it. So you can take some fresh fruit and kind of drizzle the dark chocolate over it. You get your sugar kick and then you're getting plenty of fiber as well as phytonutrients in that as well. So just something to keep in mind. Remember, I'm not into the full body detox. I believe a lot of this is prevention. And if we're taking care of ourselves on a regular basis, we really don't need to detox, okay? So plenty of fruits and vegetables. The thing with that is that, and whole grains too, beans, nuts and seeds, is that they have fiber in them. So what's so important about fiber? Well, it helps with constipation. There's two different types, soluble and insoluble. But what it does is it flushes our body of toxins that are in our intestines. It makes everything kind of run smoother. So that's a good thing. It also helps, um, it acts as a um, basically like fertilizer for our gut bacteria. It's considered a prebiotic. So it helps our gut bacteria and our gut bacteria are really important as far as keeping the intestinal wall intact. A lot of our foods that we eat, you know, there's pesticides on it, there's some toxins. So what happens is that they get through the cells, considered like the leaky gut. So again, if you have really good, healthy gut bacteria, which you will, if you diversify, have those rainbow of colors, eat tons of healthy foods rather than the sugar, the refined grains, you'll be able to help um, prevent absorption of those toxins in your body. Try to stick with an anti-inflammatory diet. This is what I cover in my course, but again, less sugar, less refined grains, less processed meats, less saturated meats. And again, we go through that in my course. So take a look at that if you're interested. I'll give you more details to follow. Do you want to juice? A lot of people talk about juicing. I'm not into just juicing all day long and not um, you know, doing away with other foods. I really don't think that's healthy, especially long-term. Um, we'd be missing out on the whole grains. We'd be missing out on food groups that our body needs. Now, each food group has different minerals and nutrients. So it's really important to make sure that we're diversifying our food. But celery is good. It has lots of fiber in it. It has minerals and nutrients, a lot of water. So you're hydrating yourself. That's why if you look at a lot of the juice, um, the recipes, they typically have cucumber in it, same idea. There's a little bit of fiber, a lot of water in it. So you're getting, you know, again, you're hydrating yourself. Uh, as far as um, 
the different vitamins that are in it, smaller amounts, but it does have a fair amount of vitamin K, celery does. So just something to keep in mind. It has, you know, about 15% of potassium too, of daily recommended allowance. And it also has some minerals and nutrients, copper, folate, and B vitamins, zinc. So we'll get more into that with different vegetables. But again, each vegetable is known for different nutrients, like a nutrient um, panel, if you want to say that. So don't just stick with one or two vegetables, diversify. It's why you want that rainbow of colors. So again, if we want to deal with vegetables or work with vegetables that have a lot of water in them because they fill us up. It helps with weight loss. It helps with hydration. And then um, a lot of fiber too, which is going to help with digestion. Now remember, you know, bloating, aggravated stomachs, some um, uh, reflux, we can go on and on. Um, but the bottom line is if we're eating healthy foods, we're going to have less of that. Now, some people do have a problem with eating raw vegetables. So what I recommend is that you can steam, you can like when um, you have you see like rice cauliflower, rice broccoli, they literally will run it through and it's like so small, it's the size of rice. It's a great way to get some vegetables in. And in my house, we actually really don't do rice as much. We replace it. I'll do like uh, fried rice, fried cauliflower rice. It's a good way to get extra vegetables in, extra fiber in, and you don't have to deal uh, with those high carbohydrate foods that aren't as nutritious. So just something to keep in mind. Rice in small amounts is absolutely fine. Every day having rice, probably not good, high in carbohydrates. And then we also worry about uh, metal exposure. It's the way that rice is um, grown, we worry it's in the soil and some water. We worry about arsenic levels as well, especially with the brown rice. So there's lots of different ways that we're exposed to chemicals on a regular basis. And then really the thing to know is just, you know, nothing is going to happen overnight. Just slowly start introducing foods and making some changes. And we spoke a little about inflammation and I go more in that in my course. But again, watching the foods that cause inflammation, the sugar, the refined grains, the processed meats, so again, do away with that. It only hurts our gut bacteria. And remember, we want really healthy gut bacteria. Heavy metals, we think about, um, some of them can cause autoimmune diseases. Some of them can really wreak havoc in our body. So where do we get heavy metals? We're not eating metal per se, but some of our foods can be laden with heavy metals. Now, um, over the years, like the canned foods, used to have lead in them. The salt, the, when the cans were sealed, uh, salt, salted, I guess you would call it, they had lead in them. So nowadays, that's all been um, basically phased out. But we worry about other toxins as well with canned foods. So, But I'll go into that. That has to do with um, plastics, BPAs. But for now, with the heavy metals, think about mercury, right? Like, I'm all into a Mediterranean diet. But you really have to be careful about the fish that you're eating. Large fish such as swordfish, such as sharks, such as um, tuna, they have higher levels of mercury in it. Think about the fish that are bigger. They've been in the water more, so there's more exposure over their, their lifespan compared to smaller fish such as salmon. So just something to keep in mind. We talked a little about the canned foods. You really have to be careful with that. Remember old homes, old cribs, uh, furniture, they may have old paint in them. So a lot of the times the children, they're gnawing, they're teething, they're eating, you know, this old paint, and that's how they can be exposed to lead. My daughter did that when we were younger. I never understood how babies got lead in them. You know, I was like, why would they eat paint? I don't know, they just seem to be drawn to it. So you really have to be careful about if you have an older home, older levels of paint, old, like multiple levels of paint, what somebody could possibly be exposed to if they decide to eat. Also, um, what you can do as far as metal exposure, you know, well, with arsenic, it's really hard because it's in the foods themselves, just limit those types of foods. But eating a healthy, nutritious diet, when we're eating lots of um, calcium and vitamin C, that actually prevents lead ex um, absorption. So again, something to keep in mind. As far as our ground goes, some of our ground art is contaminated with, um, with heavy metals. So that gets into our food, especially the root vegetables, if you're thinking about like the carrots and sweet potatoes. So again, just being careful, be, you know, not having those foods every day. And unfortunately, some of our spices too, for the same reason, they have some metals into them. The other thing is depending on like if things are sold by weight, 
you may find heavy metals in some of the foods, such as spices, chili powder, uh, salt, tamarind gets in there. It can be contaminated. And sometimes, unfortunately, there have been stories where these f chemicals are placed into it to, ha to make it um, the foods heavier because they're being sold by weight. So obviously with the heavy metal in it, the weight goes up even though there's not as much food. So again, just something to keep in mind. Typically not here in the States, but it can very well be in the imported foods. All right, so just be careful about that. There has been some studies as far as heavy metals, even in some of our juices. So what I can do is I'll link that down below, um, but just being aware of it. Aluminum exposure, right? We worry about um, aluminum. You've heard perhaps with antiperspirants, you've heard with some of the cooking. So be really careful about um, using, you know, aluminum utensils and then putting them into our foods that we're eating, especially when they're heated, because that can basically leach into our food. We have to be really careful about that. Um, as far as some of the neurological conditions, there is some concern that perhaps aluminum exposure could increase our risk of Alzheimer's, Parkinson's. Also studies on makeup, right? There's been lead in lipstick, which is a problem because our lips are very vascular. So if you're putting some um, products that have a fair amount of lead in them and then putting them onto our lips, chances are it's being exposed. Different than on our skin that has a high, you know, thicker st uh, stratum corna, those uh, products aren't absorbed as much. But I'll get a little into that, okay? So just being careful with the aluminum utensils, being careful with like aluminum foil and some of the acidic foods such as tomato has acid in it, pineapple juice, some of the fruit juices. So what happens is that it touches the aluminum, breaks down, and again, that aluminum can then contaminate our food. I did speak a little about arsenic. You can look at some articles by the World Health Organization. They make some recommendations. But again, you have to be really careful. Could be some of the foods that are coming in, like even some of the seafood, they're canned and um, basically, you know, that food is contaminated. So again, just be careful about that. And then there's been cases of our water being polluted with heavy metals as well. We can talk about pesticides, right? We're, we're all about eating vegetables, but if our foods are contaminated with pesticides, we have to be careful. If you look at the Environmental Working Group, they have what they put out um, each year, the Dirty Dozen. It talks about different foods that are that you probably should buy organic. It has to do with the exposure. So like kale and spinach, right? They're leafy, a lot of um, surface area, I guess you can say. And then unfortunately with that, there's higher chances of pesticide exposure. Same thing with the strawberries and blueberries, you know, they're fruits and then they get the pesticides on them. So you just have to be careful about that, okay? And then allergens too, where uh, higher rates of, you know, allergies more so than ever before. And why is that? We're not 100% sure. Higher rates of autoimmune disease, and they present with like eczema and dry skin and arthritis and migraines and all these different symptoms. And why is that? Is it the foods that we're exposed to, the pollutants? We don't know. Um, but the bottom line is those, the incidence of that are more common today than they were 30 years ago. So some of the foods that have higher allergies would be like corn and soy, gluten. You hear a lot about gluten. If you actually look at the medical literature, very few people are uh, gluten intolerant, about one to 2%. Some more people may be gluten sensitive, another few percent, but by and large, the industry is, you know, if I go to my food store, I have like aisles of gluten-free food. So whether or not it's actually the gluten causing the problems or perhaps some of the pesticides that are on the wheat, on you know the, the foods that would typically, that are considered, you know, that have gluten in them, again, we're not sure, but there definitely is a push for gluten-free. All I can say is most people don't have a problem with gluten, but if you're concerned, just try to limit it, see if there's any changes, if you're having, di you know, bloating and diarrhea. You can um, take a look at that with, again, your physician and certainly a nutritionist, because when we do without whole food groups, it's a problem. Dairy is another one that can be causing problems. Um, many Americans or just throughout the world, people are lactose intolerant, so that could be a problem. Shellfish has higher uh, allergies, same thing with eggs. And you just have to be careful about the foods, again, that you're eating, some of the saturated fats, they cause um, inflammation, so that can be a problem with our body. and 
drinking too much coffee. You can say it's not really toxin, but there could be mold and stuff with different coffees. I've heard about this. So again, just being careful about, you know, your exposure to everything. Maybe a couple of cups of coffee a day, but not 10. Doing away with sugar, I mentioned earlier, but it is important. And you hear this over and over again. People are definitely have a problem with um, too much sugar. Most Americans, we eat teaspoons and teaspoons of sugar a day. And it becomes a problem. It increases our rates of cardiovascular disease. It increases our rates of uh, metabolic syndrome, which can then go on to um, extra belly fat, diabetes. So be careful with that. Alcohol, right? It's a toxin. Small amount, probably okay. I like my red wine. Every night I drink it, just like less than a glass. It has resveratrol in it. But again, you really have to limit it. You don't want to do more than a glass a day. And again, it all has to do with prevention. If we're sticking with diets that are not filled with processed meats, not filled with uh, saturated meat, we're doing a lot of vegetables and fruits and grains and beans, then we're really kind of taking care of ourselves because there's antioxidants in them. We don't worry so much about free radicals that are produced. And if you're not if you're not familiar with free radicals, take a look at some of my videos here on the YouTube channel. I have um, done have done plenty of videos and. Take a look at that as far as oxidative stress goes. So start off with hydration. It's important, all right? Want to get some exercise every day. It increases um, blood flow, gets our oxygen throughout our body, and really can help detox. Getting enough sleep, really just taking care of yourself, that's so important, all right? And then we can talk about the different types of cleanses, right? So how do you detox? But number one, definitely want to prevent. You want to prevent it from beginning. This way you're healthy, right? Limit the sugars. Really, we've gone into that. There's no need to have sugars. But again, if you want it, okay, small amounts. You can try elimination diets, but I'm really not into that, as I mentioned, because I, I do worry about, um, you know, mi micronutrient deficiencies, mineral deficiencies. It's happened. It could be to the point where you throw your electrolytes off so much, there's cardiac problems, um, people that are vitamin B deficient, they can have problems with their heart. So you really have to be careful about the foods that you're eating and trying to get those rainbow of colors and a very diverse food group. You can try clean eating, right? That's what we've been talking about this whole lecture, how important it is to eat fruits and vegetables and, and whole grains. Be careful as far as going out to dinner. They tend to cook with a lot of um, uh, oils that aren't as healthy, a lot of fats, spreads, tons of salt typically. And again, when we're um, eating too much salt, blood pressure goes up for some people that are especially those that are more sensitive to it. But also um, there's problems as far as fluid retention goes. So we just, we know it's not good for us. So you mentioned sugar, we mentioned salt, um, being careful of the foods that you're eating, anything out of a box or a bag. They typically have artificial sweeteners in it. They have artificial colors. They have artificial um, flavors. And what that does is that can cause inflammation. We worry about how it changes our gut bacteria. So just be careful of the junk food. Can you have it? Yeah, but just small amounts and preferably not every day. All right. So what can we eat? Sticking with the Mediterranean diet, having fish about once or twice a week, having plenty of fruits and vegetables and whole grains, I um, basically have replaced a lot of my protein with beans. It's a great beans, um, lentils, great way to and a quinoa, great, great way to get some fiber into us, and it's healthy for us. They're filled with minerals and nutrients. So again, I don't expect this any of these changes to happen overnight. But maybe pick one or two and then keep on going with it. You can do juice detoxing, but I don't recommend doing juice just all the time, right? So what you want to do is maybe add a smoothie or two or fruit juice here or there. Not necessarily um, add a container because those typically have preservatives in them. Make it at home. It's a great way to get some extra um, minerals and nutrients, especially if you're using kale or spinach, green apple, uh, celery, cucumber. You can add a little almond milk. You can add some peanut butter if you want. You can say, my goodness, that doesn't sound so good. In the end, if you're juicing, doing smoothies, try to stick with ones without sugar and just deal, don't have to buy it. Just make it at home. It's healthier. 
uh, use some celery, some spinach, some cucumber. Uh, you can use some almond milk. You can throw a green apple in there for sweetness or just any type of apple. You can put some peanut butter in there for some protein. So a lot of different ways that you can make your smoothies and it doesn't have to be filled with sugar and it doesn't have to be that expensive. You can see kind of what's on sale. Sometimes you can buy these frozen as well and just um, make them at home for yourself. So just something to consider. Always shoot for high vegetables. You can't go wrong. And the same thing with choosing. Just be careful about all the fruits that you're eating. I like uh, raspberries and blackberries, They're high in fiber, lots of um, the fruits that have those darker colors. They're really rich in polyphenols. So something to consider. Limit the caffeinated uh, drinks, right? All the coffee. Try to stick with more water, maybe some herbal teas. That's a great way to get some extra, um, you know, antioxidants into you. I cook a lot with fresh herbs, and even if I don't cook it with them, sometimes I'll just sprinkle them right on top. That could be cilantro, it could be basil, but I keep them on my windowsill, just chop them, put them right on top of my salad. It's a great way to get some green in, and they're really healthy as well. They're filled with um, minerals, nutrients. Being careful about how you're cooking the food, right? Trying to limit the fried food that you're doing. You can either steam, you could roast, you can saute, but again, being careful with what you're sauteing with, just a small amount of olive oil, if anything at all. I know sometimes uh, people will actually use some a vegetable, uh, I guess you can call it like vegetable stock. Just be careful of the sodium content rather than actually using olive oil. And just being careful with those really heavy metals, palm oil, coconut oil, um, canola, canola oil is okay. But any of the vegetable oils, again, it has to do with inflammation and they have a lot of... Um, I can talk about, I do talk about it in another talk, but we talk about the unsaturated fats that are polyunsaturated fats. Some people recommend fasting. I also have a intermittent fasting course if you're interested in that. So again, take a look at my website at Sharon Mac Wellness. But the thing with fasting, does it help with weight loss? A little bit. But what's really good is that if you're able to do like a 16-8 window, it really can help with decreasing inflammation in our body. So when we decrease inflammation, our body's able to be more efficient and hence get rid of all the toxins that you're exposed to on a daily basis. So again, just some things to keep in mind. Lots of vegetables, leafy greens. You want to do your cruciferous vegetables such as broccoli and cauliflower. Beets are really good as well. Berries are high in uh, polyphenols and definitely micronutrients and fiber as well. Green tea, which I didn't really talk about, but it has EGCG in it. Again, it's an antioxidant. It can help impact or decrease inflammation in our body. So again, all of this works together. There's not just one thing that's gonna help. You can try a dandelion root tea. I have it, I don't drink cups and cups of it, just maybe one here and there every other day or every day. That can help with our liver. People talk about detoxing, but again, there's not one food or one thing that you can do that can totally detox you. And remember, stay away from those like colonic enemas. There's really no need for it. If you're doing plenty of fruits, vegetables, water, you're going to have, um, you know, basically that's going to cleanse your body as it is. We should be doing this on a regular basis, making sure that you know you're getting citrus fruits. They're filled with vitamin C. Vitamin C is a great antioxidant. And like we spoke about before, if you're drinking a fair amount of vitamin C or eating a fair amount of vitamin C, that can help with lead, prevent lead absorption as well. Prebiotics, we spoke a little about. Remember, those are the foods that have a lot of micronutrients in them. Now, a lot of fiber in them too, but it helps nourish our gut bacteria. Probiotics, different. Those are the foods that have um, live bacteria in them. So think about sauerkraut, think about some of the Japanese foods such as like miso, um, tempa has it, kimchi, what other, some even cheese have it too, the live cultures some yogurt have it if they have life cultures in it but what that does is it helps again flourish our gut bacteria it seems to be a common theme in this talk right if we have healthy gut bacteria then that can work as far as reducing inflammation and help reduce toxins in our body herbs and spices just you know um just kind of summarizing now Try to cook with them as much as possible, being careful with your buying by weight, being careful that, like where you're buying your products from. And you know, just maybe check a review, make sure that you know they pass the safety test, okay? Because some products that you find online that are imported, they kind of bypass being checked at all. 
Nuts and seeds are really great as well. They have fiber, they have fat in them, typically unsaturated fat. But again, it's a great way to get some calories, fiber, and uh, the oils that are in them, they actually can help reduce inflammation. Same goes with like hemp seeds, flax uh, seeds, chia seeds. If you're doing yogurt, if you're doing cereal, if you're doing oatmeal, you can just sprinkle a little bit on top. They can be expensive. They don't have to be. You can check Walmart. They have hemp seeds, flax seeds. They have like a whole section now of these natural foods that are typically pretty good for us. They have some protein in them, but you're not getting that saturated fat. Some people talk about bone broth. It's just something else, you know, lots of different ways to make it. You can do it or not. It has collagen in it. Um, but again, just sticking with water, very healthy foods. In the end, that's really what you need, just healthy foods, self-care, um, and remember water, sleep, healthy foods. That is a detox in itself because so many of us, we don't do it. We're filling our bodies with a lot of sugar, fast foods, fried foods. And then at that point, yes, we need to detox. I can go on and on with this section. Um, just a little about household products. Be careful with the cleaning products filled with toxins. You can take a look at the environmental working group. Try to open up your windows so you're not exposed to it on a regular basis. Um, and being careful, just using kind of vinegar, just using vinegar and baking soda goes a long way with a little Dawn or dish detergent. Um, you know, the, um, what am I trying to say? The, you know, what you keep on your sink as far as washing the dishes go. And then on products that you're exposed to, right? All the makeups, the shampoos that you're putting on your body, the body lotions, the body washes, your makeup. If you think about it, there's actually been studies that not during COVID time, but a woman, from the time she wakes up to the time she leaves her house for work, she puts about an average 60 products on. That seems like quite a bit. But if you think about a shampoo, turn over your bottle, look at all the ingredients, conditioner, so body wash, body lotion, which I mentioned, and the makeup, it's probably more than 60 ingredients if you think about it. So just being careful, you know, in, in the studies, none of these ingredients are a problem, but they're small amounts. If you're using these on a regular basis and you're layering, like I just mentioned, which most people do, I don't think there's any good studies as far as that goes. So again, just being careful about what you're exposing your body to. All right, guys, Sharon McLaughlin, I told you about that free ebook. You've made it this far. So you can find that at Sharon Mac Wellness. I have a detox program. All right, I have a wellness program. So get that ebook there. You'll find that at Sharon Mac Wellness. All right, guys, I will see you on another video. Follow me on my programs, Sharon Mac, MD, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. And uh, I also have a YouTube channel, which you're probably watching this now, Sharon Mac Wellness and my website at Sharon Mac Wellness. All right, guys, bye-bye.